On today's episode of Locked On 76ers All-Star Edition, Mac McClung taking over Utah. We'll tell you why that's good for him and what it may mean for the 76ers going forward. That's next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partner Keith Pompey from Utah, Sixers beat writer for the Enquirer.com. What's happening, Keith? Busy weekend. Yeah, it was, man. Yeah, it was. I can't wait to hop on this plane today and come home. <laughs> Busy weekend. But it, but it was fun. It was fun. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. yeah, all right. What was the weather out there? You know Freezing? what? It was, yeah, it was kind of cold. It got, I mean, to, to, last night after the game was probably the best night. But really? outside of that, you know, it was it was cool. But outside of that, it was crazy. You see this right here? They yeah. gave it. They gave the media this. Now it does have the Utah Jazz thing on there. But I was still trying a nice, to like, still huh? a nice hat. Yeah, still a nice hat. Like, but it was one of those things where you say, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use this hat. I'm not gonna use it." But man, it was cold. And you had, and to use it. Hat. I had to use it. They also gave us these gloves too. I didn't take them out. Okay. But, um, yeah, but it was cool. That's cool. Nice, nice, uh, nice gifts uh, for having you out there in the cold weather of Utah. Listen, it's in Indianapolis next year, so maybe a little different. Uh, thanks for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76 is, is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube at Locked On 76ers, where you get to see the free swag that the uh, NBA gifts the media for the cold nights and days of Salt Lake City. Well, Keith, Salt Lake City, we got to talk about, of course, all that took place there. Uh, going into it, we knew that Mac McClellan was going to be in the all, uh, slam dunk contest, uh, which is the feature part of the All-Star Saturday night, but we didn't know that he was going to be the talk of Salt Lake City after Saturday night. We'll get into that. We'll talk about Joel Embiid playing a lot more than we thought. Initially, it was, will he play, won't he play? And if he does play, play 10 minutes and get out. Yeah, he scored 32 points. So he played a lot of minutes in the game. We'll get into his performance and also just talk about the game in totality in the final segment. MVP, Jason Tatum, taking, over, taking home the first kobe bryant all-star mvp award so we'll get into that all right here on the podcast well keith again when we predicted the skills challenge three-point contest winner and the slam dunk contest i believe you said mac mcclung would win i said trey murphy but i thought those two would square off in the finals those would be the final two with trey murphy coming out on top even you keith predicting that mac mcclung uh would win did you expect it to be like this after everything that he did on Saturday night? Nah, not like this. <laughs> nah, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, cause the slam dunk contest got corny. Like you thought dude, he would do some, some tomahawks or some things like that, but the, his hops and the way that he was able to, I don't know, everything he did, the, the 540, um, you know, it was, it was just, sensational i mean it was great like i mean I, I i i was like a loss for words like the first dunk he did i was like wow because i didn't you, you know you look at this guy and you look at him and you and you look at him and you see how much shorter he was compared to the other ones you know his build isn't that well i mean isn't as built as they are and you're thinking like okay he's going to compete but he's not going to dominate like the way he did and you know he he was out there beating them like they stole something <laughs> like it was crazy it was crazy yeah uh the, the the two dunks that he did one of course where he tapped the backboard after jumping over two people holding the ball up and uh tapping the backboard reverse dunk flushing it too clean uh going through the going through the rim and the net and then the not the one where he put the jersey on from um uh the area that he's from uh, the Gate one that you just, where is it from? Gate City. Gate City. Recognize Southwest Virginia, bro. 
There you go. <laughs> and then the one that he had, as you just called it, the 540. Yeah. Man. The f- <laughs> and again, clean, Keith. Clean. Yeah, all this stuff was clean. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no hitting the rim and barely making it. This stuff was clean, flushing it uh through through the rim again. And and that's why they had to award him and reward him with the point total that he had for each dunk, each round, and then ultimately him walking away with the title because it was a phenomenal performance. I don't know that it will save the dunk contest because I don't think – I think they still have much more to do, Keith. If you're going to have people competing against him like that and you have a guy coming in from the G League to do so, I still don't know that they've corrected anything. What they did is they really got lucky that a guy like him – came in and was able to do the things that he was able to do and accomplish what he accomplished and putting on that type of show. Uh, I don't, again, I just don't think he's going to save the dunk contest, but on one night in Salt Lake city, he did a hell of a job. Yeah. I mean, you know what, the thing about it is in regards to saving the dunk contest, I think what he's doing is because here's the thing. He had like 53,000 Instagram followers. Now he has over a million. So (laughs) Right. Seriously, that's crazy. Right. So the thing is, to me, what I think is he's bringing more people into it and there's going to be an interest level. Now, there may be some people who say, hey, look, I may, you know, some legitimate guys like John Morant, like, yo, I got to go up against this dude. Who knows? Maybe. But I, I do think that he's he's bringing a lot more interest to it that there normally wouldn't be, you know what I mean? I I just think it wasn't, Um, but you know, good for him, man. Good for him, good for him. Really is good for him. Now, speaking of good for him, even though John Moran already said he won't do it and who knows why they won't do it, Uh, but maybe they're afraid to lose to a player like Mac McClung or a a name that's not supposed to be up there on their level as actual all-stars and stars in this game. Uh, We will never know. That said, uh, he made a name for himself. He increased his social media uh, profile with all that he did. He, before the dunk contest, as we talked about last week, signed a two-way deal with the Sixers. That's one thing. He was able to wear the Sixers uniform and participate in the Rising Stars game as part of the G League team for the Blue Coats and wear his Sixers uniform for the dunk contest. He also signed with Puma, uh, the sneaker brand Puma there. So now he has a sneaker deal with Puma. And as you pointed out, his uh, profile increased there on social media. Keith, the big question, though, whether it was uh, just humor from everything that he did. And I saw something where Shaq was talking to him beforehand. And he said, people don't really know your name. Make them know your name at the end. But now they're incorporating it to the Sixers in their roster. Keith, what does this mean for him as a two-way player and the roster for the 76ers, what's the likelihood that we get a chance to see him at some point during a regular season game? We would see Julian Champagny called up from the G League. He's never played. What makes this different? Do the Sixers capitalize on something like this? What does it work out in his favor? You know, that's a great question. I mean, it's, it's, but it's also one of those things that has to be to be determined. Like there's sure. a guy who hasn't even practiced with the team yet. Um, but I will say, like, you know, if, if we talk about history of Doc Rivers and and and, and things like that, um, you will have to say that he's really not going to get a lot of burn. I mean, he's not. If any. If, if any. any. Yeah, he's not. I mean, because, I mean, Jaden Springer is a first-round pick who doesn't get any burn, who's one of his G League teammates. Now, again, the one thing that he has on his side is that he's hyped up. He won the slam dunk contest. He turned out to become an overnight household name, so to speak. You know what I mean? But, you know, the thing is, and I I think he's a good player for what he does, but at the same time, there's a reason why he hasn't been able to latch on with certain teams. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't change. Now, If it was a three-point contest, if it was some other stuff, it was all this other stuff, you could say it. But then you look at these opportunities with him dunking and doing all this stuff. It's it's hard to get opportunities to do that in games like that. Like, you know, he might get a breakaway. He might do this. He might do that. But he's not not Dominique Wilkins. 
and he's not getting, you know, he's not going to blow by people like that all the time. So I don't know, man. I, I think it's going to be hard for him to get minutes, dude. It really is, especially that Doc doesn't like playing young guys at all, at all. Yeah, I, I don't think this changes much. The only thing it will do on Thursday, the TNT game, nationally televised game, for their first game back after the All-Star break, it'll bring awareness in that way where it will be talked about during the – not only the pregame coverage, but the actual broadcast. It will be here in Philadelphia if, especially, Keith, he is suited up on the bench in uniform. And, again, not necessarily to be in the rotation, but simply there, and the cameras are going to find him, and they're, they're going to talk about him. Maybe he even, Keith, has in the warm-up line, right, the layup line, where he puts on a little bit of a show there, and he has a crowd going on, on Thursday night. So, I agree with you. I don't think this changes much for him as a basketball player as it pertains to this actual team. I think they're set there. And maybe, maybe in in a situation where the game gets out of hand or maybe a couple of minutes where they can see it may be useful for him to have some minutes towards the end of the quarter, end of the half, whatever it might be for the coaching staff. Other than that, Keith, not much. Not much at all. No, I'm with you. Yeah. Yep. Well, one guy we know will be playing and or at least should be playing all star Joel Embiid, 32 points on Sunday night in the all star game, a game that we weren't sure if he was going to play and play. He did. He was he was very efficient from the floor for team LeBron. And uh, he put up some big numbers. We'll talk about him and why the decision was made probably to play in this game or uh, was it the right thing for him to play this amount of minutes, Keith, uh, in this all star game on Sunday night. We'll tap into that next right here, Locked On 76ers. Let's talk about the Nissan Most Valuable Player, right? So Nissan's Most Electric Player of the Week is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Arosa, right? I, so here's the thing. The person that I'm going to make as the Player of the Week is the guy we just talked about, and that's Matt McClung. Um, I know he hasn't played a game yet with the, with the Sixers, but, you know, being out here um, in Utah for the past four days, you know, Matt McClung has been the story. He has been the storyline. I mean, now, again, I know Jason Tatum came out last night and scored 55 points, and they got the all-star game MVP. But for everything else, it was all about Matt McClung. So that's why he is going to be – the Nissan most electric player. So, you know, the thing is, the guy, when we talk about electricity, we talk about somebody being fierce, right? Well, he's a fierce guy. You got to be fierce to jump over people and, and, and talk about the dog that he has. And what I mean by jumping over people, he jumped over two people, right? It's stunningly powerful. I mean, the fact that he was able to kiss the thing off the glass and go back up in these double clutches. You know, this guy, you look at him, and he's stronger than you think. So for all that, this guy is the Nissan most electric player of the week. Thank you for making Locked On 76 is your first listen. For your next listen, check out Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast, And that includes the all-star game and the player that may represent your city and right here in this case as we talked about mac mcclung we now get into joel and b key 32 points in uh 28 minutes if this is the player that we weren't quite sure and that was uh tied for uh, second high game game high honors there with kyrie irving 35 for Jalen brown off the bench to lead team lebron 28 minutes which was also second on the team behind Kyrie Irving's 29. He was 14 for 19 from the floor, four for eight from three, seven boards, four assists, one block shot, one steal, and helping again lead to the 32 points. Team LeBron lost 184-175. Keith, 28 minutes. We talked about maybe just playing 10 minutes, show up, show your face, be a part of the introductions, play a little bit, get out there, get some work in, get out there very quickly. And he was out of the game pretty quickly in that first quarter and then he was back in and I was really surprised to see him out there. How surprised were you? And why do you think he decided to play this amount of minutes, which were again, 28 second on the team? 
I mean, I think Joel probably went out there and started saying, "Oh, I'm gonna have, I'm having fun," and didn't decide to stay in there. Mm-hmm. But it was one of those things where you know he he didn't decide to to come until like to definitely play until he hopped on a plane Sunday to fly out here. You know what I mean? So which was kind of like, huh? Sunday? Yeah, he he flew out wow. on Sunday. Yeah, that's when he decided to play. Yeah, Sunday that's when he, morning. <laughs> yeah, that's when he decided to play. So okay. you know, is that that's the thing? But um, you know, to me, it's like he's out there, he's having fun, he's feeling himself. He realizes that okay, we ain't really banging like we do in a real game. Nobody's playing defense. It's just getting a little cardio in. Yeah, getting a little cardio in, and I felt like that's what he did. But yeah, it was a little bit like. You know, you would think I was under impression just like you. Like I saw him start, you know, and I you knew you expected Giannis to go out early. You didn't know it was going to be that early, like a dunk and get out. You expected LeBron James to get out early, right? LeBron played a half, but then he's also saying he had some problems with his hand. Um, and you expected the same thing for Joel and B. You didn't I didn't expect Joel to play in the third quarter. And then not only that, when he went out, when when he came back and went out in the third quarter, I didn't expect him to come back in the fourth. Same. And he did. You know, it was like, it was like, you know, he was like, "Hey, I'm cooking. Let me continue. Let me continue to do what I gotta do." Well, uh, again, I, I was surprised that he played that much. When I looked up and I saw how many points he had, I was also surprised about that because uh, of the fact that the talk was what the talk was. I never thought that he wouldn't play. As I mentioned, I just thought that it would be a lighter number than the 28 that he played and the activity with the 32 points in general uh, from Joel Embiid. Uh, Do you think, Keith, as we, you know, we'll have more time to talk Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday leading into the game. But do you think that uh, he has been and continues to be questionable on the injury report before these games? But do you think this hampers anything with the amount of minutes he plays uh played in this game because I don't I don't think it should. Nah I, um I, I you know I don't think I think like the fact that I mean I, I actually thought he shouldn't have played in the game, right? But I also think the fact that if he hasn't been doing anything and this is the one time and it wasn't a lot of banging, maybe he should be okay if that makes sense. Now here's something else. I don't know how true this is. And they, they say it's nothing really written, but it doesn't really look good for people who don't play in all-star games, but you know, they rest all-star games out with without a real, real serious injury because and, and then um come back the next game. And some people were saying like if he would have done that, it would have looked bad for, around the league for him to play on Thursday. And some people say they he probably wouldn't have been able to play on Thursday, right? Uh, the people but, up top, huh? They spoke. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? But the thing is, no one is, like, confirming it or anything like that. So that could have been part of it. But, see, you realize that most guys who do that, they just don't – they don't play a lot of minutes. Now, Jimmy Butler would come, and he at least he was in the building, and he wouldn't play at all, but he was at least in the building. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's different. Yeah, and it's it's tough uh, because you do have so many young players in this league that can't wait to be named an All Star and would love to perform in this game. And for guys who have to sit out, you know, that's that's a spot taken for for a potential uh, future All Star. So we'll see, man. And we'll have a lot to talk about with Joel and B this week as we gear up for the second part of the season. And next up for the Sixers, the Memphis Grizzlies with John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr., two All-Stars also in the game on Sunday night. When we get back, we'll talk about the game overall. And um, I'll give my thoughts, man. It's not a good product anymore. It's not a good product anymore. Why the game is in a bad place, we'll get into that next right here on Locked On 76ers. After you do, in fact, play in a game like that, the All-Star game, you're looking for a delicious treat afterwards if you are playing in 
an all-star game in the league that you're in or school that you may be in. And you just uh, don't want all the fat and calories. But you know what you can do? You can try to, a, a Built Bar. And you got to try the Built Bar. Why? Uh, with Built, it's healthy. It's actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious. You want to uh, make sure you get a few of these because they are good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. Perfect for post-game play, post-game activity, post-workout activity as well. Or just simply uh, wanting a snack and don't want to overdo it. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That is correct. 100% real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably tasty flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how they do it, but these Built Bars taste like candy bar while maintaining amazing macros, only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now, you can still go to built.com, but they made it a little easier for you. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of built bars. You can pick up a box of four of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're closer to a Sam's Club and that's easier for you, run in. Grab a 13 bar box with our hit flavors brownie batter and churro. Folks. You'll thank me later. Welcome back. Locked on 76ers. Having my built bar after, you know, 184 points on one side, 175 on the other. I felt like I played in the game, but I think I was a little more entertaining, Keith. Uh, growing up as a kid, watching this game, man, it, it really has been, um, it was a fun time watching the game from the players in their uniforms uh, then they switch them to the team uniforms that they actually wear for their respective teams. Iverson a lot in his Sixers uniform and the competitive nature that was there. Now, we heard a lot of post talk from Michael Malone, uh, the one coach, Keith, uh, from the Denver Nuggets. He was there uh, on the LeBron team, LeBron side. Jalen Brown said it was just, you know, he, well, Michael Malone said it was the worst basketball game ever played. Jalen Brown said similar things, uh, and, and that wasn't good basketball. It's an exhibition game. It's an all-star event. You want to see high-flying dunks, long three-pointers from half court that Damian Lillard made, 55 points from Jason Tatum to win the Kobe Bryant All-Star uh, MVP award. But, Keith, it doesn't feel the same for me as a basketball fan, as a fan growing up watching this, this game. And as we talked about, watching it on Sunday afternoons right in the past. Where are you uh, now covering them, growing up watching them as a fan, but also covering them and seeing how the game has been played over the last couple of seasons? I mean, it's kind of like I had a tweet like about how bored I was. I mean, it was just horrible basketball. It, it's like, um, like, you know, I don't like watching the McDonald's All-American game. And I used to love watching the McDonald's All-American game. I don't like watching stuff like that, those showcases, because I feel like it's all about guys going for self to trying to be too fancy. We all know that they're really good players, but they all play horribly. Like, you know what I mean? It, it turns into, like, a pickup game that goes wrong, right? And, and I, you know, you're looking at it and you're seeing this and it was just bad. It was, it was bad, man. It was like, I couldn't wait until like the first quarter was over and then the second quarter and then the third quarter, you're like, okay, okay. Now people are starting to announce themselves, like who's going to be the leading scorers. But it was like, no, I mean, it was just bad basketball, man. It really was like the turnovers, the, the air balls. I mean, just LeBron shot one. One shot and the ball hit the side of the backboard. Like it was horrible, man. Like every you know, the even the Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, like going one on one, got everybody off to the side. Like I don't know, it, it's not entertaining to me. It's just not. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I, it's 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 really lost it, man. We talked about how it's lost his luster, and even though they put up the combined 184 or 175. Uh, point total nothing really exciting came out of it no defense is playing being played LeBron did get a block shot I saw him get a block shot and a steal it steals happen all the time in the all-star games but you very rarely see blocks because no one competes and even LeBron who was always one that competed and they made sure in the fourth quarter 
in the in the final minutes that they actually went out there and tried, the game is not the same, man. And it, it's it's become more of everything that happens on Saturday night, which is not great. Getting ready for the All Star game, where you do still see celebrities show up, and you still want to be named to the All Star team in general, but the product on the floor. It's it's no longer the same, man. They're gonna have to fix this, and I don't know how. I don't have the answer. I don't know that you do, Keith, but I'm not gonna speak for you. I don't have the answer of how they're gonna fix this. I don't either. I mean, it, maybe they may need to just go back to the way it was, and then like if one the East just gets smacked, then they just get smacked, or something they can have an incentive, where it's like winner takes all the money, like you know, like let's do it that way. The the, the problem is. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just it's too loose. Like, what I mean by loose is, like, it's just turned into, like, street ball 101. You know what I mean? That That's the biggest problem. You know, that's the, that's a huge problem with, with that. But um, I don't know. I don't know if you can fix it. I mean, I, I think you can, you can fix it, like I said, doing the certain things. But at the same time, I think it's going to be hard because you're probably not going to get the buy it, the buy in. Yeah, from from the players, right? Yeah, yeah. from the players. Yeah. yeah, good point, man. Well, one thing I know for sure, man, I was watching the celebrity game on Friday night. Yeah, Keith, you got to pull some strings, man. Get me in there because that was also a terrible product. Out there. Really, I was like, yeah, I can get twenty points and win the MVP against these people. So pull some strings, man. Indianapolis. All right. All right. Yeah. Get me in there because we have to people. Money. I want some of that money. He's like, I, I got you. I got you. You get me in there. You, you be my agent. You get it done. You taken care of, man. And uh, I, I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to go because it's not going to be here in Philadelphia for years. And, you know, the whole new uh, arena and all that stuff. That's 2000, what, 28 or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. That's not happening anytime soon. I might be done by then. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. So yeah, pull some strings, man. Celebrity game. I'm not a celebrity, but I can at least play in that game. Nah, you're a celebrity. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, listen, thanks for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. We will check in with you tomorrow, of course, talk a little more Sixers as we get ready for the second part of the season, 25 games remaining for the 76ers. Now make your second listen, Locked On NBA, Locked On Experts, covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All right, Keith. Uh, you mind letting the good folks know where they can find us? Like my man D said, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, make sure you get the Locked On 76ers podcast. But tonight, make sure you listen to my man Devon at 975 um, uh, FM radio. 975 FM radio. I said 975. But he's going to be on there from 7 to 10. 7 to 10, not 975. 97.5 FM radio. Listen to D, the Divine Giving Show. But also follow my man D on Twitter at Divine G975. You can also follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers, and you can read my articles at TheInquire.com. Get all your coverage from All Star Weekend from Keith. Make sure you check him out, Inquire.com and Pompey on Sixers to get the latest and the greatest on Mac McClung making a big name for himself in Salt Lake City. All right, Keith. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you, everybody, as we begin this week. Thanks. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.